Warning, MF Uncensored contains adult language and discussion. Listener discretion is advised. We're a couple of misfits. We're a couple of misfits. What's the matter with misfits? That's where we fit in. We're not that being dilly. Don't go around with me. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to MF Uncensored. Don't forget, you can take us on the go with Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, pretty much anywhere that you get your podcast. Also, don't forget to check out our website, themishitfaction.com, where you can find all of our merchandise, links to all of our shows and our sister shows, such as Multiverse Fancast and Cinematic Adventures. I'm one of your hosts for the evening, Ronnie, and sitting across from me is Paul. Paul, how you doing? It's 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Why are you saying good evening to people? Because it's, oh, because who knows when they're listening? Good evening, good morning, and good night. After hours. Yeah. Late M- night. MF Uncensored After Hours. <laughs> the original goal of this entire yeah, show. Right? <laughs> but I'm good. And that was a great intro because when we did uh, Cinematic Adventures yesterday, I totally, when I said the sister show thing, I literally said Cinematic Adventures. <laughs> and Sean, Sean's like, did you do that on purpose? I said, yes. yes. <laughs> of course I did. Questionably. <laughs> oh, that's but, great. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm happy almost to see you. You know what? I feel that. <laughs> I feel that as well. We do have some news though. Can I do the news? You know what? Do it up. So we got added to four new podcast hosts, just so you guys know. We've also seen a huge increase in numbers. We want to thank you guys because, man, that's pretty awesome. We got officially added to iHeartRadio. They were kind of giving us some trouble. But Player FM, Listen Notes, Samsung Podcasts, and Podchaser. So if you guys, for some reason, have any of those (laughs) podcast apps, look us up. We are on there now officially as well. Sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. As the kids are saying. Yeah, right? So by kids, we mean middle-aged. No. (laughs) And also, just quick, more news. I didn't prep Ronnie for any of this, so just, you know, now you get to... Throw me for a big loop. Big loop. We are starting up interviews again. We already have our first one done for the brand new year. We have a couple more that I'm trying to just schedule, and unfortunately, I know, because people were asking if we were still doing interviews. It's just, that I'll take full responsibility. Like, things just got... Scheduling got hectic and yeah. difficult and a pain in the tuchus. So we're hoping, fingers crossed on that one. But Amen. all right, I'm done. All right. Well, that was some great news. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of follow along with what we did last week, getting philosophical. So we're doing misfits get philosophical. So if you remember from last week, basically there was just a five, six question, something like that, that Paul found online that we just – Answered and kind of talked about. There's 240 questions. Yes, we picked eight. Yeah. So there's a total of 240. And so we did a few last week, and we're going to continue it on with that. So, Paul, hit us with question number one for today. All right. So I think the, the last one we did was, uh, should we prevent bad things from happening? And if so, how should we? Now, yeah. the first one today is, what makes human life so valuable? Ooh. That... that That is deep and tough. I think it's just the fact that human life is so precious that makes it very valuable. I I think because, I mean, we're living creatures. I wouldn't even just say necessarily human life. I would just say life in general is valuable because you need it in order to survive, right? You need to have other humans to survive, whether it's emotionally, physically connecting to people that if you didn't have that connection, you... You know, I I don't think you could survive. So that's why, to me, you know, human life is very valuable because of the connection and the ability to survive and love and everything and learn. Hmm. I agree. No. Um, (laughs) And next. And next question. I don't know. The next one makes it is worse. Yeah. Like they go by sections, and we're in the it's about will and humanity. Right. Ah. Obviously, human life, I think, is valuable because it's so finite. It's it's something that, you know, for us, it feels like it could be a lifetime, literally. And then, you know, it's really a blink in, yeah. in existence. And it's, you know, it's a scary thought sometimes. And just it's a precious thing. It's something that you should make the most out of while, while you're enjoying it and experiencing it. And, you know, some people, that's hard. That's yeah. really difficult, whether it's something that you're dealing with personally or something outside of your control. I always think that. We're in a lot. There's a lot of control that we have over ourselves and our lives and our destiny. And to make that choice, to make that change, is always where it starts. But there are some people that are just so set in their ways. And it's not to say that they are less valuable or that there's something wrong with them. 
It's just that I think every every life is valuable. It should be contained. It should be preserved to a point. But again, that's not my decision. I am not. Yeah. I am not whatever higher power you choose <laughs> to believe in. By the way, yeah. guys, um, just to remember disclaimer: this is all just our personal opinion. If you yes. agree with it, cool. If you don't, cool. that's cool too. <laughs> just be be polite about it. Be respectful about it, and talk to us. Like we would yeah. love. I mean, eventually we want to have like a call in show yeah. where people can actually talk to us. That's and have conversations, not arguments. And have conversations, not arguments. Yes. You want to go to the next question? Let's go. What makes us human? Ooh. Ooh. Our DNA. Pants. <laughs> yeah, right? What <laughs> other species wears pants? That's a good question. Right? I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> what makes us human? I, I think our ability to learn and love. You know, I know other species do that too and everything but i think for us it's the emotional love the ability to feel you know feelings have empathy and everything like that i think is what makes us humans and also realizing that we all have differences too right i think you know that that's kind of what makes everyone human is the fact that we're all different but at the same time we're exactly alike, mm-hmm. right? We're all human. We all have the DNA makeup. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, your lifestyle, anything like that. We all have, you know, the DNA. It's just little things that make us look different that, you know, just it is the only difference that we have. So I think just, you know, that that's kind of what makes us human is the ability to have and towards one another. I think for me, it's it's the idea that we're we're so sentient, right? Like, mm-hmm. obviously, animals have some sort of sentience. They have some sort of – like, my cat has his schedule. Like, yeah. my cat knows what time it is to get up and what time he wants to eat and what time he wants to wake us up to do both of those things. Yeah. But, like, animals are, are ritualistic. People are ritualistic. I think it's our idea just that we're so self-aware, so self-conscious. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, humans evolved to be the dominant – quote-unquote dominant species. Yeah. Like, if I got into a fight with a shark – I don't think I'd win. I don't think no. I'd do a very good job. However, if we're on land, I think I might have a, a running chance. Not a yeah. fighting chance. I can run. Yeah. So for me... Be, and we what, also know how to use weapons. <laughs> humanity is just how you treat the rest of the world. And mm-hmm. a good human is somebody that you know does work for the betterment of the people around them. Now, I am not saying that you should go out, buy... You know, the most economically friendly electric car, yeah. yell at people about recycling, you know, all those <laughs> things. If you want to do great things in the world, do great things in the world. I think that's a great aspect yeah. of – it doesn't have to be the thing that consumes you completely. It doesn't have to always be some grandiose big yeah. thing. Like they, they – recently there was a, an attack on – I think it was like the Mona Lisa or something like that yeah. where people threw paint on it. Now, obviously, they're – they're concealed, but they wanted to bring notice to their cause. And I was like, that's cool, but is that really the best way to go about it? It's the stupidest way to go about it. It's aggressive. It's the TikTok generation where it's like, how many likes, how many comments, how many views, all that sort of stuff. And the thing with that too, like doing good, you should be doing good to do good, not to get the likes or Mm -hmm. the comments about doing good. Oh, there's nothing worse than when you see like, there are videos of like the TikTokers or the Instagram influencers who will like, set up there giving a sandwich to an old like yeah. a homeless person just to have it record like it's wild yeah. like we had enough trouble just setting up video for this so yeah, right <laughs> fun fact we are working on video so this was the test run episode so if you're yeah. watching this on video hey we did it hey if, if you're listening to this on you know podbean apple podcast Stitcher, spotify iheart radio and all those other new ones you can't see us, but you can hear us, so make sure you go see us as well. Finger finger guns, finger guns. I'm just going to start narrating what we're doing. I don't like this next question. so We're skipping it? Yeah, I'm going to skip it because uh. I'm in charge uh, of the questions anyway. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with being selfish? No. A hundred percent is not. I I like to say that I am selfish so I can be selfless, mm. right? For instance... You're on a plane. What do they say in the case of an emergency? Always put your mask on first. Yes. So in a way, that's being selfish because you're taking care of yourself over other people's needs, Mm -hmm. right? But if you don't do that, can you really help anybody else? Because now you can't breathe, right? So I I think, you know, it, it goes along the lines of, you know, walk the walk, you know, talk the talk, all that kind of stuff where if you're just talking and not doing it as well... Don't expect people to do it, mm-hmm. right? Because you have to show that you can do it. So really, you should be selfish, you know, it, it in regards to helping others, right? I'm not talking about, you know, 
being a billionaire and be like, this is all my money and I'm not giving any of it to anyone or anything like that. That kind of, you know, selfish, that's more of like greedy and and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I I think that everyone should be selfish to an extent. To an extent. Yes. I'm going to agree to an extent. Yeah. No, no, I think when I talk about the things that I value and like work on the most now, obviously I love my wife very much and I would do anything for her. I love my family very much. I love Mm -hmm. my friends. And, but for me, my, my health is always my number one priority because if I can't take care of myself, how am I expected to take care of another person? Exactly. So, you know, for years, that's always kind of been my mantra. And unfortunately it has gone to extreme points. You know, Ronnie's known me for a long time and he's known that I've, I've, there were points where it was, it it was again, all consuming and it was all like, we would go on vacation, him and Sean are at like at the pool drinking at, you know, not 9am. And I'm like, well, I'm going to the gym for the next two hours. I'll see you guys. Next. Like that was, yeah. you know, it's, it's good to be healthy. It's good to be cognizant. It's also good to, you know, be selfless in yeah. that regards to like, sometimes it's like we went on our honeymoon, not yeah. me and Ronnie, just so you guys know, <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, my wife and I, <laughs> even and, though we're both sitting here wearing rings and know, everything, right? it's like, no, but, um, not to each other, <laughs> my wife and I, and I didn't work out the whole time because spending more time with her, I yeah. was able to be selfless because you know, sometimes being selfish does hurt and yeah. it, you got to find the balance. And yes. there's always, there's always balance to find with stuff like that. I think selfish has just such a negative connotation yeah. nowadays that I think it, it's just about changing your mindset around yes. and just seeing it from a different perspective. Now I like this one. Do humans need other people in order to live? I'll go first because okay. I keep throwing you under the bus. I think, yes, humans are social creatures. We saw over the past couple of years with the pandemic and everything that people people need socialization. Like mm-hmm. ki- kids alone, you know, Ronnie and I both work with kids. Kids are so far behind developmentally yeah. from just being isolated for so long. Yeah. You know, they're they're two years mentally younger. There was no there was no rules, no consequences, no none of these things. And you know, they're going to do studies years from now about COVID and how it was handled and some of the pros, the cons, and definitely some of the negative connotations. Like depression went through the roof. Yeah. People were, were more depressed than ever before. And people were, you know, self-medicating, mm-hmm. taking new medication. Even my wife, she was like, why am I drinking so much? And it's just because we had nothing. There's a yeah. level of depression. It's like seasonal depression Yeah. where you can't explain it, but it just, it's just a thing that there. happens. Humans are social creatures. We always have been. Like, I have more fun. I can watch a TV show, same TV show. I don't care what it is. Watch it by myself versus watching it with my wife. 99% of the time, I have more fun watching it with my wife. Yeah. Or a friend or anybody else. Just even if it's something I've seen a trillion times, yeah. we had, we just have fun with that social aspect. We could not say a word to each other the whole time. But it's just the atmosphere. That- it's the atmosphere. Yeah. It's that feeling that you're not alone. You have somebody yeah. there. And can people survive, you know? On their own, there are people that do. They're yeah. those super introverted people who just – they're happy the way that they are. That's fine. Yeah. I think as a whole though, humans need – even introverted people have some sort of human interaction. Yes. So I, I think that social norms and social expectations are totally a part of humanity and everyday life. Yeah. No, I, I agree. You know, we, we all need at least someone, mm-hmm. you know. It doesn't have to be anything, you know, like love or, you know, anything like that. But we just need, you know, we we need attention as humans, right? You know, so we need, like you said, the social interaction with other people as well. And it's a comfort thing too, mm-hmm. right? We want when we're – because you, you have your ups and your downs, right? When you're down, you want to, you know, have someone there to kind of help and comfort and guide you. You know, when you're up, you want to celebrate it with everyone that you know and everything. So I think it's 100% true that you need to have human interaction and connection in order to survive. Hmm. All right. Can animals feel pain? If so, why do they... Why don't they try to avoid hurting each other? I think animals can feel a, a certain level, obviously physical pain. Yes. You know, I've stepped on my cat. Like you hear it. <laughs> yeah. Dogs whine. Like, you know, we, you see that. I think that they can feel a, a certain level. Of, uh, dogs are incredible. I love dogs. I'm a huge dog guy. Dogs always know when something's off yeah. and they will always come and try and, and just try mm-hmm. and be present with you and try like, whether it's just because they enjoy the attention or like, yeah. but you could see it in their demeanor. Even, even our cat supposedly, and this is according to producer Melanie and the internet, if a cat's sitting on you and purring, it's because it feels your vibrations off and it's trying to help heal you. Yeah. I don't know how true that is. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. Yeah. I'm not a vet, <laughs> but 
I definitely think that. But in terms of why they, I don't think they don't feel it. They don't feel emotional connections towards each other as much. Yeah. You have some animals that do, like penguins mate for life. Yeah. You know, and dolphins will have relationships throughout their lives. So it's wild. Animals are such an interesting species yeah. and just an interesting idea. Like, yeah. If if they feel what they feel, if you know, like I would love movies and TV shows where you could talk to animals. Yeah. But I feel like if you were able to actually talk to an animal, it would be very like super basic, super simple. Oh yeah. Not like Shakespeare or anything along those yeah. lines. I mean, it could be. It could be hilarious. If I could yeah, talk right. to an animal for a day, that'd be a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, Doctor Doolittle. Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> or the episode of Supernatural where yes. Dean's it's a terrible episode, but fun yep. in that regards. Yeah. What about you? What do you think about animals? I I think they do. Mm-hmm. I I think they. They feel, you know, physical pain, and I think they feel emotional pain. You know, like you see those clips on YouTube or where social media or whatever. Like it's like, oh, look at this lion hugging the person from that grew him up twenty years ago. Now. Those are always fun, you know, like stuff like that. So, I think with humans from a young age, the animal from a young age to whenever, like. They're, they do develop a connection, mm-hmm. you know. But as far as, like, from animal to animal, who knows? I mean, for instance, you know, you, you talked about, like, penguins having one mate for their entire life. Look at a lion, right? The, the, Where? <laughs> yeah, right? The the male lion, right? The, head, the leader of the pack. Pride. Pride. Oh, yeah. No, I know. But I'd say leader of pack. But he basically gets whatever he wants has has all has all the women yep. you know all the lionesses it blew know? my mind side note to find out that most likely simba and nala were related yes oh god blew yeah. my mind and i was so uncomfortable <laughs> can't watch that movie anymore yeah right mufasa That's getting correct. around uh-huh uh-huh but so you know i think they do have that pain and emotional connections and everything um but I know the second part of the question was, why do they still hurt each other? Right. Because they got to survive, right? Animal, animals got an animal. Exactly, right? They got to eat. What are they going to... They're just not going to eat? Is everyone going to be... <clears throat> excuse me. Is everyone going to be a vegetarian? McDonald's. 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 <laughs> McAnimals. Yeah, right? Yep. You know what I mean? Like, that. that's why they do it. They don't just go around and just be like, huh, hmm. I just want to kill you because I want to kill you. Yeah. You know, they go, huh. I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. I eat meat. Check this out. Hey, that's meat, <laughs> right? I'm gonna. That's meat. I'm gonna go eat it. Mm-hmm. You know that. That is why they do it. It's not like they do it just because. <laughs> just because. So next one, we already did this one quite kind of before. So I'm gonna skip it. Is it okay to lie to protect yourself? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would say, as long as it's not at the, the expense of somebody else, yeah, there is nothing wrong with some white lies. I was like, I, a I, white lie. Like, it's like, like it's the holiday season, right? Yeah. So, you know, Christmas is coming up for us. We celebrate, you know, Hanukkah, whatever it is that you celebrate. You're going to buy gifts for people, and you're going to fib about what you bought them, or not tell people, or yeah. like say, oh, I didn't get you that, and when you really did. Yeah. So, things like that are totally fine. But if I, self-preservation, it's like I said, at the end of the day, if I can't take care of myself, I can't take care of anyone. Yeah. But I will not... I will do my best to avoid lying to hurt another person. Yes. Sometimes it is the necessary evil for me anyway. Like, yeah. unfortunately, we live in a world where, you know, I don't trust a whole lot of people anymore. Mm-hmm. So I may withhold things about myself, you know, lies by yeah. omission. You know, that's an old question. Is a lie by, by omission still a lie? I, you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say it's really a lie because it's not like you you said something, right? To me, a lie would have to be... You said something on purpose that you knew wasn't true, mm-hmm. right? But if you just don't say anything, you didn't lie, right? You know, I mean, it still could depending on what it is, could be just as bad as the lying. But yeah, so hmm. I, I I would agree with you. Everyone's got to tell a little white lie, a little white again, lie. like like you said, as long as it's you're not lying to hurt someone, and you're lying to like help or comfort or something like that i i think it's okay all right next one what is beauty you beauty is in the eye of the beholder that's oh, such a cop-out answer <laughs> but no honestly i think everyone's got different one different things of beauty mm-hmm. you know what i mean like my idea of a beautiful woman because again that's what i'm attracted to obviously since i'm married to my wife but you know like so you know, 
there's different things, right? I'm attracted to that while somebody else might not find her beautiful, Mm -hmm. right? And then you also have the beauty on the inside as well, right? The personality. Does the personality match up? Because obviously you can have the most beautiful woman or man, but if they are personality shit, it drops them from a 10 to whatever, you know, you want it to drop to, but all those red flags. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Looks so, like a carnival. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, I think that's, this is a tough, everyone would have their own answer to what is beauty mm-hmm. because again, everything is different. I think, you know, like I said, the physical beauty is going to be completely different, but as far as like the beauty on the inside, I'm sure it's very similar with everyone, mm-hmm. right? You just want someone that's honest, loving, caring, right? You, you know, you don't, most people don't want somebody that's going to be abusive, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, right? You know, so I think the idea of beauty changes as you as you age, as you grow up, as you see the world differently. Like yeah. there are things that can be beautiful. Like we went to Niagara Falls, that was beautiful. Like yeah. it was really cool. I think there's different levels of beauty because this question is very vague. It's very what do you dif- like? And obviously, we immediately go to significant other. Yeah, I I have no problem just admiring things. Our world is awesome. There are some really cool things that happen on our planet that we get to see and we get to experience. And then sometimes we even get to like see in person rather than just yeah. on social media or anything like that. Except for fireworks videos. Please stop posting your fireworks videos on Instagram. I'm skipping through them. I'm sorry. And they don't look good. They look terrible. Yeah. I don't like fireworks to begin with. Like I'm not like, we got to go see the fire. Oh, yeah. Fourth of July. That's it. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, things like when we went to Jamaica or when we went to Italy, like, the, I was like, oh my God, this is like yes. the coolest thing. And that's a level of beauty. In terms of, you know, physical attraction or how you see someone, I agree. It's a twofold process. It's there's, I look at them first and what what I determine inside as attractive is going to activate. It's going to yeah. be different than everyone else. That's why I hate when people are like, well, how come you can't see how beautiful that person is? Or I'm like, because that because in my eyes that's not beautiful and that's not to say that there's something wrong with them or that no. they're not beautiful it's just that's you know you could say somebody's beautiful like i have no problem saying that ronnie's a good looking guy that doesn't mean i think he's beautiful oh <laughs> but anyway like even my wife you know my wife and i met about four or five years ago and traditionally she was not the you know not to say she's not beautiful because i think she's the most gorgeous person ever yeah. but like i it was i fell in love with her personality almost immediately yeah. like just it was such a, a nice like just Snap. Yeah. Like everything else changed. Like my entire world perspective changed. Yeah. And between the way that she looks and the way – or the way that I see her both physically and mentally and spiritually, like I think she's the most beautiful person ever. Yeah. So not that she's going to listen to this. She sometimes <laughs> does though. So hi, sweetheart. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, a little plug-in. <laughs> yeah, a little, little plug-in to producer Melanie. Check out Bibliophiles Assemble on Instagram. <laughs> Let's see. So this one will do a, kind of a two-part. Where do emotions come from, and can we choose our emotions, or do they just happen? Ooh. Where do emotions come from? They're learned. Mm. You know, because if you think about it, when do you cry? When it hurts. When it hurts. When you're sad. When, when you're happy. Right? When you're scared. Mm-hmm. Right? You, you know. I haven't cried in years. <laughs> you know what I mean? When do you smile? When you're happy. But also when you're nervous, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I think emotions are learned based off of who you surround yourself by. You know, when you're young, it's you're going to learn it from your family for the most part. And then as you get older, it's going to be, you know, you know, media or your friends, you know, your environment. So I think emotions, you know, like I said, are learned from. From other people, right. you know, just because you, you, you don't know what happy is until you experience it. And everyone shows it differently, you know. So I, I think we're all born with the emotions, but how we show the emotion is what we kind of learn from mm-hmm. everyone. I think we're, I think we're all born at a baseline. And I think that baseline evolves and changes. And, you know, there's always the, the debate, like when babies are born, you know, coddling or, or versus, you know, like the, the crying, soothing type yeah. thing where you just let them cry. It out. Like there's a lot of different, there's trillions of different methods. And that's where you start learning emotion, right? Your self-sufficiency, how to deal with it. You know, my family, always, I was always told I'm very sensitive growing up, like, because I got upset at things and I didn't yeah. know how to express it. There, there's so many different thought processes, especially with, when you talk to old school people, like yeah. rub some dirt in it kind of old school people. And there's nothing wrong with that per se. But now it's like nowadays 
well, what was my trauma? What was, what, yeah. what in my childhood is affecting me still today? And that's, I think, a fascinating topic and something that, you know, mm-hmm. like I, I want to learn more about because it's, it's funny to look back and be like, I had a great childhood. And then you really start to think about it. You're like, did I? It wasn't as good as you thought. I think emotions though, we all start off at a certain level and it, it's not a hundred across the board, right? It's mm-hmm. not everybody's the exact same, just like how not everybody's happy about the same things. Yeah. And then I think you learn based on how the rest of the world interacts with you based on your emotions. Yeah. I do think you can, to a point, control your emotions because a lot of people think that you could just turn it off. I don't think so. I think no. you can learn how to not ignore them but also just process them better. Yes. You know, There are plenty of times where I get angry but I have to take a second, yeah. take a breath. You know, There are strategies. There's techniques. There's all sorts of ways yeah. that you can control how you react to a situation. Like There are times where I have to turn on like – a hundred percent get into the zone and just be like, I need to focus on this right now. I can't think about this right now. So I think to a point we can control emotions, but I also do think that they are some of the most powerful things that you could ever try and deal with. Yeah. No, you definitely can. You have to control your emotions, Mm -hmm. you know, because you know, they say all your emotions got the best of you. You know, like when you, when you see somebody that gets upset, like playing a sport or something like that, where they get upset and then what happens then, it controls them and then they start sucking for the rest of the game match, whatever it is. And that's the reason why they lost or their team lost because their emotions got the best of them. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone has the ability to control their emotions. It's just learning how to do so. Right. The challenge. All right. We'll do one last question. And this is the last of the (laughs) free will type questions. Can predestination and free will coexist? Hmm. hmm. I'll go first. So Thank God. <laughs> I I don't believe in destiny. I don't believe that this is the one thing that you were meant to do in your entire life. I like to think that there's a lot of different things that will bring you the fulfillment of achieving a destiny. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that I can choose my the way I live my life. I I'm one of those people that constantly looks back and goes, "What if I did this?" or "What if yeah. I like it's just, it's more just a mental exercise for me at this point, more just like, you know, thinking about winning the lottery." Yeah. Right? So, you know, for me, I I always think like am I here I'm here to do something. I yeah. I'm here because I have a reason to be here. I'm not here by accident. And that's more just self-assurance like, you know, yeah. that kind of mentality, but I also like to think that I'm here to do not so much, you know, do A, B and C, but also like for me it's more like you're here to, you know, make people laugh. You're here to yeah. be a joy to like your friends and family. You're here to do the right thing. You're here to help people. That for me, it's more of a general outline, and it's more me choosing my own destiny as mm-hmm. opposed to having it chosen yeah. for me. Yeah, I would agree. You know, I, I, I think that some stuff maybe is already like, you know, destiny or whatever you want to call it, right? But at the same time, we all have the choice to do something mm-hmm. or not do something, right? So I think there is. I think they could kind of coexist to some extent. I would, I believe that there's a little, little bit more free will than having something like predetermined throughout your entire life. But you know, sometimes it does make you think. You know, huh? I wonder if you know, like for instance, me and my wife, we knew each other when we were teenagers. We grew, we had a little thing when we were younger. We grew apart. And a few years, more than a few years later after, we, you know, we got back together and now we're married and kids and everything. So, you know, like, it's like things like that. It's like, huh, I wonder if we were, we should have stayed, you know, or actually dated younger and Mm -hmm. who knows where we would have been in life, you know, you know, you, like you said, you look back on things and you go, huh, I wonder if I should have done this instead or, you know, maybe done this sport and I could have been, you know, like a famous football or basketball or whatever it was, you know, like stuff like that. You you always think back on, mm-hmm. you know, so and that's where it's almost like, huh, I feel like I was always destined to do this. Destined or be for greatness. This. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. All right. <laughs> we'll stop there because we do have some more. I think next up is about happiness. Yay, Uh-oh. finally. A little brighter note next week. Seriously, though. Yeah. But that's going to wrap us up for today. 
if you like this episode, which I'm sure you did. Don't forget to subscribe and download all of our content off of Podbean, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to us. Also, make sure to check out the YouTube page as well so you can get some like cool stuff on there too that's one another way to listen to us as well mm-hmm. i know our friend brendan aka blind bat 8719 yep does that so make sure you check out the youtube as well as misfitfaction.com and obviously instagram twitter tiktok facebook just mm-hmm. look up mf uncensored or the misfit faction for most of the other stuff though but again that's gonna wrap us up i'm ronnie and i'm paul And we will see you all next week. Bye. See ya.